Draconix here. In this tutorial we're going to demonstrate how to run a slightly more advanced redstone rig than the last one I ran. Um, this one is basically going to output automatically on its own every three seconds to one redstone signal and then cut it off in another three seconds, go on to the next, so on. I believe the order is left, right, top, bottom, or top, back. And we'll actually write the program for that, so that's definitely going to be the order. So first you have to know how to edit a program. And to do that, you simply type in edit and then whatever you want to name your program. In this case, we're going to call it red repeat. And if the program doesn't exist, it'll make a brand new generic file with nothing in it. And we can start coding. Now the first thing we're going to have to do is set up a loop here. And the easiest loop to set up is repeat. Then after that, we'll put in until s equals 1. And what we're basically doing here is anything in between these two lines of code is going to keep going until this condition is met. And we're not going to let it ever meet that condition, so it's going to be what's called an infinite loop. It'll never stop running until you crash the machine manually, which is pretty easy to do. So the first thing we're going to do is set s to 0, and that'll just make sure that we keep it at the steady value that we want it. And now we'll start with our coding. Now, Redstone has its own API, which means they've pre-programmed some commands to work in there. It makes it a lot easier to activate Redstone signals. And the first one we're going to use is rs.setOutput. Now, there's two fields that you can fill in called parameters. The first one is going to be what direction you want to set the output to. We can use left, right, top, back, in this case, we're going to use the left. Then we're going to set it to true or false. True will mean that the redstone is putting out a signal. False will mean that it's turned the signal off. It's default on false whenever you start the machine up. So we're going to set this to true. Now that's great and all. It's going to basically keep setting it to true every time. And we don't exactly want that. So we're going to throw in a three second delay here and we use a simple command called sleep and then in parentheses you'll put how many seconds you want it to wait and we'll start with our next line which is rs.setOutput we're going to use the same site again and we're just going to turn it off and we'll throw in another three second timer and we'll see what that does. Now for any program, in order to save it, see how it says press control to access menu? We'll basically do that. Everything's keyboard activated, so don't try and click down there like a dummy. Hit enter on save, and it'll tell you it's saved to the file red repeat. And that file is the new command that we will have for it. And we'll hit control again. Let's go over to exit. And we'll fire it up. And right now it's only going to do the left side because that's all we've actually added the code for. And you can see it's working as intended. So now, we have the system frozen up because it's stuck in an infinite loop. And that means it's running a program that it can't stop running because the condition can't be met. So we're just going to hold down Control and R and that forces the terminal to reboot. Now as long as you don't break the terminal, it'll maintain the file that you just installed into it. So we can go back to red repeat, and the code we've already put in is there. As soon as you break it with any kind of item though, it will get rid of this code, so you'll want to have a disk drive eventually so you can back up the files so you don't have to lose everything every time and recode and make a whole mess out of everything. So now we're going to do another rs.setOutput command. This time we're going to activate the right side. Put it to sleep again.
and then turn it back off and sleep again for another three seconds. We're just going to do this with every side that we have a redstone torch in right now. Just to show how the function completely works and how useful it could possibly be. Now this can save you a lot of redstone wiring um, once we get into wireless signals sending back and forth we'll be able to use another terminal to activate a terminal down below or way up high where we can't reach or might not want to go into maybe across a lava pit and it'll automatically send that redstone signal for us and that can save you a lot of trouble in the long run as you can see this is a very simple program mostly just using the same commands over and over again. You're going to find a lot of programming is like that. Keep in mind this programming language is very case sensitive, so if you're having problems trying to run a part of the script, check your capitals, check your lower cases, make sure proper things are in parentheses. Uh, you'll want to make sure that anytime you're giving direction it's in quotes not entirely positive if you need to do that for this programming language but I would highly recommend it that ensures that you don't have any mistakes and one other thing I'll point out that I'm doing right here is you'll see that I've added two spaces in front of each statement you don't have to do that but it's letting me know exactly what is contained in that loop so it makes it a little bit easier to organize your code later on especially when you start getting the programs that are five six seven hundred lines of code maybe even more than that okay so walking through real quick it's going to set off the left side sleep for three seconds turn it off sleep for three seconds right side it'll do the same sleep for three seconds in between top on top off back on back off now wait three seconds and start the whole thing over again until s equals one, which it never will. So we're going to save that. We're going to exit out again, and we're going to run red repeat. So the left torch on for three seconds, off for three seconds. Same with the right side, off, and then on. Now the top one will set off. And finally, the wire that we have to the back. And it's just going to keep doing this until we terminate the program forcefully with a reboot. Now, one way we can avoid having to do that, if you know how long that you want to run the program for, if uh, maybe you want to run it for five cycles and then stop so that it goes back into the command prompt, so it's not running itself all the time. Um, we'll go back to edit the program. Let's say we want to run it five times. Right now s is equal to zero. So we're going to set it so it's going to run it until s equals five. So we're going to add a simple command. s is going to equal s plus 1. What this is going to do is it's going to take the current value of s and add 1 to it each time it goes through the loop. So once it hits down at the bottom of the code here, s is going to equal 1, which is not what it wants to see. We're going to go all the way up and repeat. s is going to equal 2. It's not ready for that yet. Then 3, then 4, then 5. So we're going to save this really quick. Exit out and see how that works. Now most of the usefulness of this will probably come out of uh, build craft or industrial craft. You might want to automate some of your machines to proper timings. And you'll see that we're starting our first cycle here. It didn't activate, that's probably just server lag, so keep that in mind. But you can see the redstone wires themselves flickering. And I always have nice little friends to keep me company here. 
Now if you look at the prompt, one thing you'll notice when a program is running is you don't see a cursor. That's a good way to tell if the program is actually running or not. Um, if the computer is locked up, you won't see that cursor, and that means that you're waiting for something to complete. So that's just how that works out. I believe we're around our fourth time, but we don't have the strongest compiler in the world here, so we can't exactly check that right now. And I believe we're on our fourth or fifth cycle. This should be the last cycle. Five is probably a little too long for a tutorial, but you're probably going to be writing longer programs, so just keep that in mind. And it should stop here. you'll see we have access to our command prompt again. We can go back into editing the program. And you'll see that it did what we wanted it to on the first try. Now a lot of the times you'll see the program, you'll type it in, you'll get it ready, and it'll say for some odd reason it can't run the program, and it'll give you a line number to look at, and that'll tell you what type of error is there and where to look for it. Uh, most of the time it will be what's known as a syntax error. It just means that you typed in something wrong. They're very common in programming. And just carefully look over the statement that it highlights out and try and correct it. For instance, if we set this to lowercase o, and try and run it, it's going to crash right at that line, which is line number seven. We can go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very quickly look at our statement. See that the O is not capitalized. And that will fix it. If you want to change any of the timers on the redstone switches, you can go from three to five to whatever number you want. You can do it in tenths of a second, so point one. And that's about it for that command. And that is a simple redstone repeater program.